Hey everyone, CPO here. And in this video, I'm gonna be installing the EQT brushless RS3 low pressure fuel pump into my 2019 Golf R. This is an all wheel drive vehicle. So there is a different pump for front wheel drive, the GTIs, than the all wheel drives. The process is fundamentally the same, but just know it's a different pump. In order for this process to go smoothly, you really wanna make sure you have the fuel tank level as low as possible. Like drive around until your light comes on and you know that you're like very low on gas. I totally forgot that I was getting ready to do this install and filled up the tank a couple of days before. So I'm going through the process right now of draining the tank. And I've done a separate video on this, but Essentially, I'm just going in and using basic settings in the engine module and then draining the fuel tank into a, uh, you know, a VP racing can. And the way I'm getting access to it is where I already had the fuel line uh, quick connections put in for my ethanol sensor. But if you're planning ahead, you can just drive the car until you're low on fuel and then do the install. But otherwise, this is a way to drain the tank. Uh, just be careful and make sure that you're mindful of things like your battery, for example. Uh, I have this on a trickle charger during the process. Remember, fuel and electricity don't usually mix, so be super careful with that. Uh, but uh, I want to not drain my battery down completely as I'm running my fuel pump to empty the tank. And also, I find it almost a little bit weird that I'm using the low pressure fuel pump to evacuate the tank. And then I'm gonna remove that fuel pump. It's almost like it's digging its own grave, which is kind of weird. Anyway, that's beside the point. So once you know you're low on fuel, now we can all start from the same position. I am going to take off the negative cable on the battery just to make sure that there's no power going back to the harnesses on the low pressure fuel pump. And then to remove the back seat, you'll need to remove these little plastic covers. I don't leave them in the vehicle. I literally just put this in to show you how it works. The top one flips out and then the bottom one you push down and then rotate it to release it. Then pull up on both sides of the seat and then you'll need to push it back and then lift and then pull forward uh, to get it out of the hooks. But the seat comes out fairly easily. Underneath the passenger rear seat is where the low pressure fuel pump cover is. We're gonna take that cover off and remove the rubber grommet and then disconnect all of the electrical plugs. Uh, that first plug does have the little red safety tab you need to lift as well. And then to get to the factory controller, you're going to reach up underneath and there's a, there's a big flat tab that you can press up with your finger and that will release the entire controller to come out. So don't pull on the wires going back to the controller until you find that little tab. And it's pretty easy to find actually. You just feel back under there and push up and you'll feel the tab. I'm kind of a stickler for cleanliness. These fuel pumps get pretty nasty under there for some reason. I don't want all of that uh, crud to end up in my fuel tank. So I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup work before I take the pump out. Here I am removing the fuel line by pressing the tab and then pulling up. So one thing to note here is you see I have a little bit of fuel in there, but no pressure. The reason I have no pressure is because the car has been sitting long enough. But if you let the car sit, that pressure will naturally dissipate. You will almost always have a little bit of fuel coming out. If you park the car after driving it and immediately try and pull that line, you will, however, have a lot of pressure. My advice would be to perhaps pull the plugs, the electrical plugs, start the car, and then let it run until the car turns off because it's not getting any fuel, and then let it sit and let the rest of that pressure sort of dissipate. Now I am covering up the fuel line with a clean paper towel and shoving it up back under there just to get it out of the way, but I don't want crud to get inside that fitting. All right, a little bit more cleanup. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this locking ring with a Sharpie. You can see here, the locking ring rotates into place and the further you rotate it, the tighter it gets. So I'm gonna sort of make a mark so I know how tight it is currently. And that'll be my target whenever I put it back on. So I'm gonna rotate it counterclockwise by hitting one of these tabs, it doesn't matter which one with a screwdriver and sort of push it around and that will loosen up that ring. Now your pump may pop up at this point, and once you 
let the pump sort of spring up, you can remove that rubber sealing ring. All right, after you've done that, you can rotate the fuel pump out. And uh, once you get it out about that far, you're gonna want to remove the plug for the fuel level sensor. Uh, use a pick tool and go up uh, and just sort of release the tab. That's an easy way to do it. And that will allow you to pull it out the rest of the way. Be mindful for the fuel level sensor itself. And uh, you're just gonna rotate that around. It should come out pretty easy, but you wanna try not to bend it or break it. That one fuel line can just pop off and it'll fall back in the tank. That's no big deal, we'll go get it later. And then this other one we're gonna unplug by pressing the tab and twisting and pulling, and it should come off fairly easily. And now your factory fuel pump is out. Now I am gonna clean up around the perimeter of where the ceiling ring is going to, to rest. There's a bunch of crud in there, and I just, like I said, I, I would rather clean it up than have it all fall into the gas tank. So yeah, that's what I'm doing here. You can see how much different that looks. And I'm probably not gonna get all of it, but I wanna get most of it. Now the recommendation is to replace this ceiling ring. Uh, it's an easy replacement, it's not very expensive, but if yours is in fairly good shape, it can be reused. I'm gonna reuse mine. I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and clean. All right, so now uh, going inside the tank and pulling those two fuel lines back out, this is the one that we sort of popped off initially. It's plugged into another line, so we're gonna remove it doing the same uh, method that we used before by pressing the button and then twisting and pulling it apart. There you go, you don't need that part we just removed. You can put that in the parts bin with your old fuel pump. And then now we have these two lines. One is skinny and one is fat, and uh, they will plug into the EQT pump. So we need to remove this little shipping plug and then the larger fuel line is going to plug into this 90 degree connector and you'll hear these things click into place and then the smaller one plugs in there. Again, listen for the click. Then we wanna grab the fuel level sensor cable, make sure it's routed underneath the sensor uh, float itself and then sort of ease that inside and then uh, we can go ahead and get the fuel level sensor plugged in. Now the entire assembly is going to sort of rotate and compress, it's spring loaded. So you're gonna rotate it to where that tab is facing the rear of the vehicle. You can see the tab on the top hat of the fuel pump. And as you're doing this, you can reach down and feel and make sure that the float is free. The most common problem with the install tends to be people getting the fuel level sensor wires sort of hung up around that float. So just make sure that's free and you should be good to go. Then we're gonna slip our ceiling ring into place and make sure that it is pressed down all the way around. It's not twisted or kinked or anything like that. It should lay completely flat all the way around the perimeter of that hole. All right, once you're sure that that's in place, then we can go ahead and finally push down and rotate the top hat for the fuel pump. And then as you get that into place and held down nice and flat, you can take the retaining ring and then slip it over. I'm lining up the Sharpie mark uh, to the section where the Sharpie mark was on the outside perimeter. And then uh, once you get a couple of clicks in there, it should hold down just fine. Then what I'm gonna do is take a big screwdriver in a few different places, rotate that around until that Sharpie mark lines up where it was before, and I'll know that I've probably got it into a place with pretty good tension to hold it down. And you can see here that Sharpie mark where that's lining up with where it was before. All right, once you've got that done, you can remove this little cap and then put in your fuel line pull it back out of where I have it hidden away for safety. And then of course it's been protected, so it should be clean. And I'm just gonna stab it right on there, press down, you will hear a click. And that's important. You wanna make sure all of these cables and fittings are clicked in. All right, here's the harness that came with the new fuel pump. And there's the controller. The controller is actually gonna go in the back of the car, so we'll deal with that later. But we need to get the old factory controller out of this wiring harness from the factory. So I'm using a pick tool just to pry that lock on the connector apart. 
All right, so after you get the factory controller unplugged, it's probably easier just to take the old harness out of this little hole in the cover. That way you can get the new harness cabling in. It's a little bit uh, thick, so it'll be nice to not have other wires in there. It goes in sort of sideways like this and then rotates and everything else should go in fairly easy after that. Now we're putting back in all of those other factory harness connectors. I am leaving the brown ground wire hanging out of the top. We'll put that someplace else. Now all of these connectors are gonna be used with the exception of one. I'll show you that here in a second, uh, but it should be pretty easy. This is gonna plug in together, make sure it clicks into place. And then you've got the one with the red tab. Make sure you put that safety tab back down. And then you have this one here that's going to clip right into there. The only plug that we're not using now is this one here, but it can just hang out underneath there. So those big plugs that you have connected together, you can slip those back where the old controller was, just sort of shove it back into that little hole back there and it'll be uh, nice and out of the way. And then I'm pushing the wires down, sort of getting everything laid nicely and then putting the cover back on. To put the cover back on, you want to sort of uh, lock it in, pushing forward first and then push down on the back side. The rounded side is the back. Push down on that to sort of lock it into place. Uh, so now I'm gonna cut a little slot in this grommet to allow the new cables to come out. And this is gonna go to the new controller that came with the EQT pump. And then this is just my way of sort of making it look nice and clean. And then you wanna make sure that you get that tidied up. And then the connector for the fuel pump module, I'm gonna shove it back uh, underneath the back seat. And we're gonna deal with that here in a minute. Now I want to connect the ground to a body ground. So right underneath here is a good place to ground that. Uh, I am pulling apart the plastic trim just a little bit to sort of give me some room, but it's not necessary to actually remove this entire thing. I've got it freed up enough where I can get a little bit of sandpaper in there. And basically what I wanna do is just make sure that I sand down that so that when I connect the ground cable, I'm getting a good metal to metal connection and there's no paint uh, that's gonna prevent that from making a good connection. And then I'm putting in the wire and then instead of putting the plastic body panel back down, I'm installing the nut first and then pushing the body panel over the top of it. And the reason I did that is because now, basically what I did is I made it so the nut is going to be directly touching the ground wire connector instead of having a piece of plastic between it and the ground wire connector. And you'll see this here in a second. I'm gonna sort of tidy up the rest of these panels. And then when I tighten down that nut, it's directly on the ground wire. And you can see here, the plastic is now just sitting over the top of it. So that'll hold fine and gives me the best opportunity for a solid ground connection. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this wire loom tape just to run the brown ground wire alongside of the other harness wires and try and clean that up a bit. And then I'm also gonna just tape a couple of places down to the ground wire. That's gonna hold the entire wire loom in place exactly where I want it and make sure it's not rubbing on anything or in some funky position uh, that, uh, that might cause problems later. All right, so after that, we can put our rear seat back in. It's pretty easy to get back in and then it should lock back into place. All right, now we're going to the back of the vehicle. I'm gonna go underneath the rear floor so I get some of my junk out of here. You can see here I already have a Haldex controller. So I'm just gonna do the same sort of thing with the new EQT brushless fuel pump controller. So I'm connecting the controller to the harness and I think I'm just gonna lay it right here. And because I have carpet, I'm just gonna use Velcro, the same thing I did on the Haldex controller. So little piece of Velcro, the hard side of Velcro and cut it to fit and that makes a nice way to keep things in place. Boom, right there. And then when I put my floor back on, you'll never see uh, any of those wires. The control module is gonna get hot, so you don't wanna have it really tucked in anywhere, but there's enough room in there to get at least a little bit of airflow and heat dissipation. 
All right, so now that we've done that, I can go ahead and put fuel back in the car. So I'll dump those few cans of fuel back in there. And then the factory low pressure fuel pump uses a 15 amp fuse. We're actually gonna remove that and swap it out with a 20 amp fuse. This new one pulls more power. And so we wanna make sure that we have a fuse that can handle it. Now, the other important thing is you need to make sure you have a tune that can accommodate your low pressure fuel pump. So EQT recently came out with a tune modification to allow you to add the LPFP capability right onto an OTS tune, which was great, which is why I'm able to do this without a custom tune right now. The fuel pump is gonna give me more headroom to push more fuel. It's not really gonna make a change right now, but this is all in preparation for a turbo upgrade that is coming up in the near future. So anyway, guys, that is the install of an EQT low pressure fuel pump. It's a brushless RS3 fuel pump, and I need it to run full E85 on a bigger turbo with MPI in the near future. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.